<laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd first like to take a moment to recognize uh, the Honorable Governor Mara Healy and uh, soon to be here, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Veteran Services, Joe Santiago. Uh, we have Senator Walter Timothy, Senator John Keenan, uh, Representative uh, Mark Cusack. Thank you all um, for being here today in the beautiful town of Braintree. And uh, I'd also like to thank our veterans agent, Vincent Fontaine, uh, Mary Ficicello, for all their hard work um, that they do for the community every day and our veterans. Uh, we also have some of our uh, post commanders, uh, Pedro Vidal, commander of the Braintree Veterans Council, Vincent Fontaine, commander of the DAV, uh, Robert Williams, commander of the VFW Post 1702, John Bourne, commander of the American Legion Post 86. And I just want to like to welcome everyone to Braintree, where our commitment to veterans runs deep. Today we stand in our newly transformed Braintree Veterans Center, which was once the foster school. It's now a symbol of unwavering dedication to those who have served our nation. In this building, we now host veteran services for Braintree, Holbrook, and Avon. And we are the new home of Braintree's DAV Chapter 29 and VFW Post 1702. Here in Braintree, we have embraced our responsibility to care for our veterans. We are very proud of our banner program, which displays our veterans throughout our town. This is a daily reminder of the sacrifices made for our freedom. Our Braintree veterans not only served our country with honor and distinction, but they continue to serve our community. I'd like to thank Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for their ongoing support and commitment to our veterans and all veterans throughout our great state. They always put veterans first, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Honorable Governor Mara Healy. Thank you so much, Mayor Kokoris. Thank you for hosting us in this uh, revitalized, repurposed place. And uh, it's wonderful to be here at the Foster Veterans Center. It's a wonderful resource, I know, for veterans in Braintree and around the South Shore. And I just want to commend you, Mayor, for your service. And thank you for your partnership to our administration. And also uh, commend you and the city in particular for repurposing this former school for such a noble and necessary reason. So thank you very much, Mayor. I also am delighted to be here um, on behalf of the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll and our administration, joined by our legislative leaders and partners, Senator Walter Timothy, Senator John Keenan, and also Representative Mark Cusack. We thank you for your partnership and your commitment to making sure that Massachusetts is the very best state in the country when it comes to looking after our veterans and those who served. Uh, delighted to be joined by Bill Davidson. Really appreciate, Bill, the great work that's done at a home base for so many people, particularly as we think about, you know, mental health issues and TBI and all sorts of things that people are dealing with, their traumas. You know, nobody does it better than you guys, so we really appreciate your presence here, Bill. To Patrick, um, representing all of our uh, wonderful veteran service officers, thank you for your presence in communities around this state. It is so, so important, the work that you do, reaching out to and making sure that those who aren't used to ever asking for help, because they've only been in the business of helping other people, get that touch and get that get that outreach and we thank you patrick for your partnership and of course peggy we thank you as you represent those who have made the ultimate sacrifice and today is about honoring our veterans and honoring the families of veterans and all service members and certainly gold star wives the association what you do um, your participation in events throughout the year brings such meaning and i think such a poignant and necessary reminder to what this is all about. 
what this is all about. So we thank you, Peggy, for, for being here today. We're joined by the Massachusetts National Guard. General Keith, thank you so much for being here today, and thank you uh, to our Guard uh, for answering the call in so many different ways. And finally, last but not least, uh, let me thank your new Secretary of Veterans Services. Thanks to the legislature, we actually have a cabinet-level position, a Secretary of Veterans Services who is just doing incredible work, um, and that is our Secretary, John Santiago. He is a um, major in the U.S. Army Reserves, a veteran of two foreign deployments, um, and has done a tremendous job just building this um, this cabinet, which he'll talk talk more about. But I just want to thank you, Secretary Santiago, for your work um, and for all you've done to make today's announcement possible. This is Veterans Week, and it's a time to honor military service and reflect on the sacrifices that our veterans have made that make our life today possible. And as I look out in this room and I see the men and women in uniform, those who've served, um, I am so moved by your presence. And I just want to thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do and for being here today. Uh, I remember my grandfather served in the Army, and he always recounted his experiences in World War II. My uncle is Vietnam era. And, you know, through them and through folks who um, have meant a lot to me in my life as mentors and as friends who served, um, I see their faces in all of you. And I'm a little girl, again, standing in our town common for Memorial Day Parade, a different, different event. But each year I remember the presence of so many service members and what that called uh, and what that inspired, I think, you know, in everyone to see, to see people gathered. And today, it's, it's Veterans Week uh, here, Veterans Month, really. We're trying to make it a month-long commitment, a commitment that, frankly, should be, and in our view, is 365 days a year, 24-7. But this month does give us, and this week gives us, a particular opportunity to wish you a meaningful Veterans Week and to thank you for your service to this country. What that means for us, though, is action. Um, it's not just about words, uh, though I'm saying too much, I suppose. It is about action, and that's what today's announcement is about. Because we know we need to listen, we need to step up, and we need to be there for our veterans who have given so much. And the way we want to do that is by today announcing that we're filing something called the HERO Act. The HERO Act. We like that name. Honoring and empowering and recognizing our service members and veterans. The HERO Act is the most comprehensive piece of legislation to help veterans in the last over 20 years. We're really happy about that. And and it's what you deserve. What it does is it modernizes and expands benefits, improves services, and will help us reach more veterans than ever before. Our knowledge of who veterans are and how they're impacted by their service has really advanced greatly over the years. So the benefits that they're eligible for should be expanding as well. Mental health, behavioral health, this stuff is real. We know it is real. And whether it's PTSD, depression, anxiety, substance use disorder, we know that veterans suffer disproportionately. And as veterans suffer, their loved ones and families suffer. So this legislation is going to expand behavioral health services by allowing veterans to be reimbursed for visits to outpatient providers. It's also going to create a working group to explore the use of alternative therapies for mental health disorders among veterans. We need to make sure that we're doing everything we can here in Massachusetts to help veterans heal and thrive in our state. The HERO Act is also an important part of what we've called our affordability agenda, making life more affordable for folks in this state. This legislation is going to put money back in the pockets of veterans in Massachusetts and help their families. It will increase the disabled veteran annuity by 25% from 2000 to 2500. It will increase by the same amount the veterans hire tax credit, which will incentivize employers to hire more veterans. It will expand 
the access to the active duty buyback program, which will allow veterans to put their years of service towards their state retirement. It's going to give cities and towns the local option to double veteran property tax exemptions and tie the exempted amount to inflation, helping to maintain value. We'll also eliminate the $40 fee for the specialty veterans license plate. Now that may be a small amount, but the Secretary and I think that's actually important, really important. It's what, uh, it what, it's what people deserve. You should not have to pay to display your veteran status on a license plate in our great state. We're also adding a new license plate decal option for women veterans in particular. In addition to expanding, veter uh, to expanding benefits, which is important, the HERO Act is also going to do a few other things. It's going to modernize veteran services in a few ways. Now we know the veteran population has changed. Uh, the healthcare landscape has changed. And our services, our programs, have expanded. We just need to make sure our laws are catching up with all of that. So through the HERO Act, there will be clear statutory authority for benefits that the Executive Office of Veterans Services has developed, including dental benefits, medical assistant programs, and operation of the veterans cemeteries. It's going to broaden the legal definition of a veteran to better align with federal standards to basically allow more Massachusetts vet, uh, veterans to be eligible for more benefits. Importantly, we're going to advance commitments to a more inclusive representation in veterans' services. That includes expanding the scope of the Veterans Equality Review Board uh, to make sure that veterans who were unfairly discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell actually get benefits today. It's also going to change uh, things to make sure that there isn't any discrimination against a veteran due to race, religion, disability, and so forth. It's going to create a pilot program uh, to support women veterans and establish a working group of stakeholders to identify other potential areas of discrimination related to veteran care in Massachusetts. We just want to make sure that everyone who served is well served by our Commonwealth. We cherish our veterans in Massachusetts. Military service is really at the core of what this nation is about, how we came into being, and why it is so important that we support our military, who made possible all the freedoms that we enjoy today. Freedoms that include the right to agree or sometimes disagree with one another. But at base, there are some things that must always abide. And those freedoms, those hard-won freedoms, are something that we honor through honoring the work of our veterans. And the best way to honor our veterans is to make sure they are taken care of and taken well care of. This is our legacy. Uh, it's got to be our reality every day. As I say, we should have the best veteran services in the nation, bar none. That's what we're committed to. That's what we're recommitted to this Veterans Day and every day. And it is now my honor to introduce our fantastic uh, Secretary of Veterans Affairs. I want to tell you, John Santiago, you know, he's a lot of things in life. He's an ER doc. He's dealt with a lot of trauma. He's used to, uh, he's used to, to, to working and operating under pressure. And uh, while it's a little different uh, being a secretary, it is, it is a brand new secretariat. And just in a matter of months, he has built up a really terrific secretariat uh, and is out there hustling every single day, thinking about ways we can better serve veteran service members and their families across the state. So I am honored to be able to bring to you our Secretary of Veterans Affairs, John Santiago. Well, good afternoon, everyone. That was a tremendous summary, Governor. Thank you for summing that up so I wouldn't have to. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, for hosting us in Braintree. It's great to be amongst colleagues, some of my former colleagues here in the legislature, some of the hardest working people I know who support our veterans day in, day out in the legislature. It's great to be with some stakeholders who I know are on the front lines working day in, day out to support our folks. And of course, our great General, General Keith, who's out there doing the great work here. Governor Healy, thank you so much for your leadership and for moving so quickly to support veterans in your first year in office. It sends a message that you care, that you prioritize, and that you will fight for our veterans. And as a veteran myself, I'm grateful. 
Not only have you invested more in veteran services than any administration has ever had, but because of your leadership in passing the budget, the biggest tax reform package that we've had in a while, and a transformative housing bomb bill that was just filed, that's a commitment that you care about families. And that means veteran families as well. We at the Executive Office of Veteran Services, under the direction of the Governor and the LG, Kim Driscoll, have one mission, and that's to honorably serve those who served us. That's been our commitment since our office was established on March 1st, just eight months ago. It's a commitment that's now bearing dividends. With two veteran homes that are being transformed into world-class institutions, we just had a groundbreaking in Holyoke a couple of months ago. Chelsea was just opened up a few weeks ago, inviting the first 20 veterans in. We've established new boards, new programs, new commissions to better support our veterans. And we're engaging folks. People ask me, how do we start this new secretariat? How do we deal with the tragedy that we saw at Holyoke or in Chelsea? It starts with engagement. It starts with listening. And that's what we've been doing throughout the Commonwealth, day in, day out. And that brings us to this moment, where we're introducing the most comprehensive piece of veterans legislation by a governor you know, over a generation. And as the governor said, this proposal follows three major themes. How do we expand benefits? How do we make sure that folks feel included? And how do we modernize services? And the best part, we did this in partnership with so many of the people that are standing behind me and so many of you. We spent the first three months of this secretariat going across the Commonwealth, listening to your stories, hearing what you wanted to see in a bill. We met with veteran service officers representing over 100 cities and towns. We spoke with dozens of nonprofit partners. We even conducted a 50-state review to see what's happening across the whole country because we wanted to make sure that here in Massachusetts, we will lead. So this bill today is just the start of the conversation. It's a commitment to engage and tell you how we want to honor those veterans. Because if you're one of the 6,000 veterans out there that's on Chapter 115, our needs-based financial assistance program, we want to help you get reimbursed for behavioral health care, which couldn't be done before. And if you're one of the 17,000 people, 100% disabled veterans, Gold Star spouses, families, that receives that annuity, we want to better support you by increasing that. If you're a small business owner or a veteran who's looking for a job, we want to make it easier. And that's why we included a tax credit in this bill. I want to close with something George Washington once said. He said, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any wars, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. As some of you may know, a year ago, I was deployed to Syria. I think about my time there often, and I feel so privileged to have come back and transitioned with a loving family, a job, and people who care about me. But that hasn't always been the case for our veterans. 40 years ago, the Vietnam era, and even today. And this bill is about changing that. And it's about honorably serving those who served us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I want to welcome to the microphone my good friend Patrick George, who is a VSO and currently leads the Massachusetts Veteran Service Officers Association. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and Secretary Santiago, and all their state and local officials that are here today. My name is Patrick George, and I'm the president of the Massachusetts Veteran Service Officers Association. We represent the 200 plus veteran service officers that are working in every single city and town in Massachusetts, some of which my colleagues are in this uh, auditorium today. Thank you for joining us as well. We represent communities from Braintree to the Berkshire County, and we hear from veterans every single day, and we hear from their families every single day about the services that we provide and how we can improve those services, and how we can improve their lives on a daily basis. The HERO, Act, the HERO Act makes sensible yet substantive policy changes to improve the lives of our veterans who put on a uniform for the service country. 
This bill, this bill expands both the quantity and the quality of Chapter 115 services by allowing us to expand eligibility and by codifying mental health and dental health reimbursements. The HERO Act will allow municipalities and provide municipalities ways to make sure property tax abatements that are adopted at the local level maintain their value throughout the years by tying those to inflation. And lastly, the HERO Act provides incentives for companies to hire veterans by providing a work incentive and by ensuring our veterans have the ability to invest in their retirement, those who work in civil service, who work in municipal government, and who work in state government by buying back their pension time that they, serve, that they earn by serving in the military. I'd like to thank again everyone for joining us today. I look forward to working with all the other stakeholders as this legislation moves through the legislative process. And I am now honored to introduce another integral voice in the veterans and family sphere, who is Peggy Griffin, the president of the Greater Boston Chapter of Gold Star Wives of America. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Santiago. Um, for 79 years, the Gold Star Wives of America has been the only national organization that advocates for widows and widowers who've lost their spouse due to their military service. Our members are from all eras. Congress recognized the importance of our organization by giving us a congressional charter in 1980 as a national veteran service organization. We're the only congressionally chartered organization of this kind. The Greater Boston Chapter is the second oldest chapter in the country. So we provide support, benefit information. We connect to the VSOs here in the Commonwealth. Um, and we also work with other veteran organizations to provide opportunities for volunteer activities. Our members have lost their spouse while um, in action, while on duty, or as the result of a service-connected disability. But it's through these experiences our members fully understand the needs of our veterans. Our members tell us that when they lose their spouse, their income drops 75%. So not only do they face financial issues, but the, the loss and the emotional issues come to them at a time when they, least have the, when they have the least resources to deal with them. So knowing that there's support out there, knowing that there's a program like the annuity, makes a big difference. And the VSOs have started to understand the, the Gold Star families and really support them at the local level as well. So this bill with a 25% increase in the annuity will, is much needed by our members to help them pay for expected large expenses and unexpected expenses. It is a much needed benefit and we welcome the increase. The members of our chapters have seen the struggles of veterans in the community through our service projects and in our own experience. We support any and all efforts to help repay the debt that can never be repaid. The proposed package will help fill many gaps for all veterans. So thank you to the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Santiago for your continued support of our veterans, military families, Gold Star families. We are honored to be part of an effort that keeps Massachusetts with the best ben benefits for our military families in the country. I would like to welcome Bill Davidson, the Director of Veteran Outreach, Peer Support, and Volunteers at the Home Base Program to the podium. Thank you, Peggy. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Davidson. I'm the Senior Director of Veteran Outreach and Peer Support at Home Base and a retired Command Sergeant Major in the United States Army. Uh, thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Santiago, Mayor, um, General Keeve, uh, for inviting Home Base to participate in today's event. Home Base is a Red Sox Foundation and Mass General Hospital program that is dedicated to healing the visible wounds for veterans of all eras, service members, veterans, military families, and families of the fallen through world-class clinical care, wellness, education, and research, all at no cost. Since its inception in 2009, 
Home Base has provided care and support to more than 35,000 veterans and family members and trained more than 80,000 clinicians, educators, first responders, and community members. Home Base is proud to work closely with the Healy administration on important issues facing Massachusetts veterans. We thank Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Santiago, and their entire team for their unwavering dedication to Massachusetts veterans and their families. The HERO Act builds on this commitment with new programs and reforms that, uh, what will significantly improve the lives of veterans and their families by easing administrative barriers, creating economic opportunity, and importantly, expanding access to mental health care. Access to mental and behavioral health care is vital. Since 2010, more veterans have died by suicide than from combat during Vietnam War and operations in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Mental health is essential to overall health and wellness and increasing access to outpatient mental health care is an important step towards ensuring veterans and their families receive the care they deserve. Home Base is proud to serve our veterans and their families and is committed to working alongside the state to serve the mental health care needs of our nation's heroes. We look forward to the continued par partnership with Governor Healy in doing our part to better the lives of veterans across Massachusetts. And to my fellow veterans, happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. Oh. And at this time, I would like to welcome uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll to the podium. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It might be raining outside, but it feels like the sun is shining in here, right? It's always good to be with the governor, uh, secretary, members of the legislature, General Keefe and others, so many veterans in the room. So proud to be with you. I want to add my gratitude and respect to all the veterans joining us today. As the governor uh, may have alluded to during her remarks, uh, my dad is actually a U.S. Navy veteran, 22 years. Uh, we are, we were, are, and will always be a Navy family with all that entails. Moving around, making new friends, uh, working hard with discipline and dedication. I was one of those families who every three to five years, new place. Um, exciting and also hard, uh, but so proud of the work that he did when he was in the Navy. We've also seen over the years how hard it can be uh, for members of, of a veteran's family. Anyone who's serving, it's not just your own work that you're doing, your family's involved as well. And when you're committed to serving your country, it's honor. It really is an honor to be part of that whole effort. We've also seen how hard it can be when vets are coming back to access the benefits that they've earned. Historically, there's been just a lot of red tape to go through, and one of the great roles that our veteran service officers do is helping to cut through that. But we know that veterans are the get stuff done type of folks. When there's a problem, they want to solve it. And in our administration, we want to think we're get stuff done type of people as well. And where there's a problem or an opportunity to do more, that's what we want to do. We believe that veterans programs should be as action oriented, mission driven, and committed to getting results as our veterans have been throughout their service. That's the commitment Secretary Santiago and the team at the Executive Office of Veteran Services are putting into action every single day, and we're lucky to have you, John. That's the spirit behind the Aero Act, the HERO Act, so aptly named, the most comprehensive veteran legislation in Massachusetts in nearly a generation. Think about it. This legislation is going to expand our benefits to reflect the needs that veterans and their families have today. It modernizes services to reflect contemporary realities and advances the full vision that our administration shares with veteran organizations for the range of services that should be available. It makes a commitment to inclusivity and embraces the diversity of the veteran community, their identities and their experiences across branches, across regions, whether it's our country, whatever conflicts they may have served in. Veterans have always been as diverse as America is. And they've always shared one big thing in common, the commitment to give of themselves for the safety and prosperity of our nation. That's why we're so thrilled to be here to embrace this opportunity, the HERO Act, which promotes inclusivity and expands benefits. We're not only showing our gratitude to our vets when we do that, but we're addressing these evolving needs. 
Massachusetts has always been a leader in this space. We set the BIHAR, and the HARO Act represents a significant step forward in, the, in that support, especially when it comes to our women and LGBTQ plus veterans. So, so pleased to be with all of you this afternoon as we not only kick off Veterans Day, a little bit early, but welcome in this opportunity where Massachusetts can continue to set the bar high and make sure we're delivering for our vets across this Commonwealth. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much, LG, and thank you to everybody who spoke and joined us up here, and thank you to all who turned out. Uh, indeed, happy Veterans Day, happy Veterans Week and month to all of you. Uh, we're happy to take any questions on topic, if there are any. Otherwise, we'll come and say hello. We're good? All right. Great. Thanks again.